Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to go through the Redux challenges on FreeCodeCamp. So what is Redux? Redux is a state container for React, although you can use it separately on its own. It basically helps us manage our data that we have inside of our React application or any application for that matter. So let's uh, start learning it. It will be pretty confusing. I will admit, but uh, this will be meant to supplement your own learning of Redux. Definitely read the docs on it and let's uh, do the first lesson here. Create a Redux store. For this challenge, they want us to do redux.create store. And then we want to pass in the reducer to it and that will actually make the store. And the Redux store is the object which holds and manages application state. So I'll pass this reducer in here and that should be all we have to do here. And yes, I know this is very confusing right now. Like what the heck does this do? But hopefully it gets better in the later challenges. So let's uh, just move on. And I need to pass a value of five into the reducer and now it should work. Maybe, no. Oh, I have to make a store variable. So we'll go const store equals our redux.create store and then the reducer. So now let's try it. Yep, there we go. Get state from Redux store. Now we want to actually pull out the data that's in the store. And to do that, we can do, first of all, define a variable called current state. And then that's going to equal redux.get state. Or actually, it's going to be the store. Use store.get state. So store.get state. And that's going to get the state that we want. I'm going to try console logging it just to see what it gives me. So yeah, basically the store just has five in it and that's it. Usually it holds a lot more data than that, but uh, right now it's just five. Let's try it. Yep. Define a Redux action. So in Redux, we have actions that will update or delete data or change the data in the store. And to define an action, we want to declare an object called action. So I guess we'll go const action equals an object and then we'll set a type property in here to be login. And there, now we have an action with the type of login. Pretty simple. So let's move on. Yep, define an action creator. Action creators just return our actions. So for this challenge, all we want to do is have a function called action creator that will return our action. I guess we'll just do return action here and hopefully that works. I don't know, let's try it. Yep. I guess so. Dispatch an action event. So this is when we actually want to call something to change the state. What do we do? We grab the store and we call dispatch on it. So store.dispatch and then we want to log in. So we're going to do our login action. So we'll pass in login action for this parameter and we'll call it. And then that will dispatch this object to the store and it will, with some more functionality, it will update our login variable that we have in our store right now. But right now it's not actually doing anything. We're just showing how to dispatch an action. So let's try this out. Yep, handle an action in the store. So once we dispatch it, it will go through and find the reducer to handle it. So in this case, the reducer takes in the state, the state that is in the store right now, and it also takes the action. And what we wanna do is we want to say if our action.type equals login. Then we want to return a new state. So we're going to return, we're going to return login equaling true. Otherwise, we're just going to return our previous state. And I believe we have to spread it in so that it makes a copy of it. And I think this will be right. I'm not sure though. Let's try it. Yep. Cool. Use a switch statement to handle multiple actions. So here we have two actions. We have a login user action and a logout user action. And in our reducer, we want to be able to handle each type, the login and the logout type. So to handle that, we're gonna use a switch case. And with switch case, we do switch and it takes in our action.type. And then it says, if this action.type is login, then we want to do something. Or we're gonna do, yeah, case login. Case login, it will do something. Otherwise, case log out, it will do something else. And we also have to break in between these. And then we'll have our default case, which will just return our state spread in. So basically if the action doesn't match any of these, then it'll just do nothing. And if our case is log in, then we want to set authenticated to true. So we'll return our new object of authenticated equals true. And if it's log out, then we'll return authenticated equals false. And actually we don't need these breaks here because we return. And once we return, it just stops this, or it just breaks out of this function anyways. So we don't need the breaks. And I believe that's what we had to do here. So yeah, basically if we do store.dispatch down here, store.dispatch, and we dispatched our 
login user, then it would change the state to be true inside of our store because it would dispatch and then it would call this reducer and it would pass in that action, which is a return of type login. And then it will do this case statement and it will return authenticated equals true, which will update our store our state in our store. And let's uh, try this one out, see if it works. Nope, maybe I have to get rid of what I just did here. Uh, now let's try it. Yep, there we go. I guess I messed up the tests. Use const for action types. Here we want to take the string of login and logout and make them constants. So we'll declare a constant of login equal to the string of login. And same thing for logout. Const logout equals a string of logout. And then we can, instead of using login here, we can make it just login without the string and same with logout. And then we can do the same thing down here for type. We can just do login and logout. This is just a convention that Redux uses or that a lot of people when using Redux, they do this just to make things a little bit easier to understand. So let's see if this works. Yep, register a store listener. This is done with our subscribe method on our store. And basically what this subscribe method does is it will do our function that we put into it every time a action is dispatched. So we'll go down to this uh, code here and we'll do store.subscribe. And then what do we want it to do? We'll do a callback function. So I'll put an arrow function in here and I'll just console log, I'm a message. And there we can see that since we dispatch three times, it gets updated three times or it's called three times. Now I don't really know why count isn't going up by one every time because it should, but I'm not sure if I have to worry about that. So let's see if it works. Uh, no, I guess my callback should also increment the global count variable. So this one. Oh, okay. I see because the add doesn't actually change the count. Whoops. So I'll just do, I guess I'll put curly braces in here and console log again. And then I'll also do count equals or plus equals one and there we go now it's one two and three and now it should work yep combine multiple reducers so in this code we have two reducers we have this counter reducer and we have this auth reducer that take in our actions of increment and decrement and then the auth reducer takes in actions of login and logout. And what we want to do is we want to combine them. And to combine them, we do redux.combine reducers and then we pass in our named reducers. So we'll go down to root reducer and we'll do redux.combine reducers. And we want to give them names as well. We'll give the counter reducer a name of count. So we'll do count equals counter reducer. And then we'll give our auth reducer a name of auth. So we'll go auth equals auth reducer. And now they're combined and we can dispatch any of our actions that we want. We can dispatch increment, decrement, login, and logout without any problems because when we create our store, we take in this one reducer of root reducer. We basically just split them up so that it's easier to read and follow so that we can kind of categorize our different actions. And then we combine them to make it all work together. So let's try this out. Yep, send action data to the store. In this case, we have our notes reducer right here that takes in our actions. And this add note text function is going to be our action creator. So what we want to return from this function is a action of type add note. So that's the name of it. So that we know what action to do. And it's also going to have some extra data in it called text of note that's being passed in right here. So basically when we add the note hello and dispatch it, then we want Redux to update its store to add that note of hello. And how do we do that? Well, we go up to our switch statement and we need the case where it is add note. So we'll do case of add note here. And then we want it to return a new state. And the state will be text of our note that we passed, I think. Or actually, maybe it will just be our action dot text. And that's it. Actually not, because this is an object. So text action dot text. And there we go. We set our state to be hello. Seems pretty reasonable. So yeah, this is our action creator and this is our reducer. This is how we dispatch an action. We do store.dispatch and then we dispatch this action to our reducer that takes it and then it updates the state accordingly. So let's try this out. And I did something wrong here. I think it has to do with what we change it to. I think it should just be action dot text. Maybe I have to do state is action.txt, although I don't believe so. I don't know, I'll try it. Nope. Um, 
maybe I should just return action.txt and that's it, not even as an object. So yeah, maybe that's what I had to do. Let's try that. Yep, okay, cool. Most of the times it would be an object, but for that challenge, I guess they just wanted the string. Use middleware to handle asynchronous actions. Yeah, this is kind of confusing. Basically, our middleware is called Redux Thunk, and when we create our store, we pass it in as a middleware, and then we're able to do asynchronous actions, like getting data from an API. And basically for this challenge, all they want us to do is dispatch a request and then dispatch our other request after the set timeout or inside the set timeout. So we'll just do redux.dispatch our requesting data, and then we'll do redux.dispatch our received data inside the set timeout. And our received data takes in a parameter of data, and I'm guessing that's this object right here. So I'll just pass that in. Now, I'm not sure if it's working or not because it's not const logging anything, but I guess I'll try it anyways. Yep. I guess so. Create a counter with Redux. Here they're making us do a lot and basically create a counter from scratch. And the first thing we want to do here is probably get our store up and running. So to do that, we'll change null with redux.createStore. And what do we pass into our create store? We pass in our reducers. So we'll pass in counter reducer. So that should be good for the store. Next up, we'll make our actions. So our Increment action will be a function, I believe. It'll be an action creator, which is a function that returns our actual action that we do. And it's always gonna have a type, and this type is going to be increment. And I'll change the increment up here to be a string of increment, because why not? And same with this one, decrement for that one. And then we also want to pass some data into this as well. And I guess I'll call it count. And for increment, I'll pass one because we want to increment by one. And then we'll kind of do the same thing for deck action. So I'll take everything here and copy it there. And then instead of increment, we'll do decrement. And then for count, I'll do negative one. And then now we actually have to work in our reducer. Our reducer is gonna be a function that takes in our state and it also takes in our action. And then we want to do a switch case inside of our reducer. So we'll do switch, pass in our action.type. And then for our case of increment, we want to return a new state state and this new state is going to be state.count plus one or it's going to be count equals state.count plus one. Oh, I guess I don't even have to pass in our count variable here then since I can just define it up here inside of our reducer. So I guess I'll just get rid of that. And then for our case of decrement, I'll return our count of the state.count minus one. And I'm guessing we want to actually have a default state. So our default state will equal an object of count of zero. And I'm not sure if this will work or not. Like maybe I had to make my store a different way and define some default values in there, but hopefully this will work and let's uh, try it out. And it doesn't work. Shocking. Oh, it should increment and decrement the state by one. So we actually don't want an object, we just want the number. So I'll just get rid of all these objects in here and I'll just do state plus one instead of state.count and I'll do state minus one. And I think now it will work. I don't know, let's try it out. Nope. The Redux store should initialize with a state of zero. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. For our create store, is it the first parameter? That is the state. It might be the first parameter. So our first parameter will be zero, I think. No, is it the second parameter? I don't know, let's try that. Nope, I gotta look this up quick. So I just looked it up and I believe it is the second argument in create store is the initial value. Otherwise we can define our initial value right here. So I'm not really sure why it's not working. I might have to do state plus equals one and state minus equals one. Maybe that's why. Let's try that. No. Once, what if I console log something here? What if I console log our store dot get state or dot get, yeah, store dot get state. I get undefined. And if I put a zero here, it's still undefined. I'm not spelling counter reducer wrong. No, maybe I need a default case. Default, just return our state. I think that's why, okay. Oh my gosh. I just had to do a default case. Now it should work. Okay, yep, cool. Never mutate state. For this challenge, we want to add a new to-do onto this list of to-dos when we dispatch this add to-do action. And to do that, we'll take our state, we'll return, actually we'll return our new state. So we'll take our state and then we'll append on our new state and that is going to be our action dot to do because we pass in a to do here and i guess it's not oh we want to we want to do to do's equaling our new array of our state 
passed in and our action dot to do's or our action dot to do our new one appended onto it and actually i don't think this is supposed to be an object it should just be an array so i'll get rid of this and this and there we go we're spreading in our state of before and then we're appending our new to do onto the end of it which is what we were supposed to do let's uh, try it out Yep, cool. Use a spread operator on arrays. So this is basically what we did before. So I guess we did it right. I'll do our new array and we'll do dot 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 state and then we'll append on our new to do. So same as before, action dot to do. And this should work for this one. Let's try it. Yep, cool. Remove an item from an array. This can also be done with the spread operator, but it could be done with slice and concat as well. Now we want to remove one of these items from our state based on the index that's given. So what we want to return is our, our new array. So I think to do this one, we'll do state dot slice and we'll slice at our index so it'll be action dot index to our action dot index plus one or just action dot index again can't remember if it's plus one or just the same and i'll try action dot index plus one let's try it nope maybe it's just the same now let's try it no maybe it's because i'm mutating state and i shouldn't do that maybe i have to spread this in as well do spread and then state dot slice now we'll try it no now add plus one here try it no okay so i console logged what we're actually doing here and we're actually just slicing off pretty much everything except for that one so instead of doing this we're going to do state dot slice from zero to our index and then we'll append on our state again except it will be from our new slice of our index to the end so let's see if this works nope maybe i have to do minus one here or i might have to do minus one on this one so now let's try it no i'll try commenting out my test here now I'll try it okay so i think instead of the minus one being here it should be in this one and i believe it will work now because i'm removing index two. Oh, index two would be the two here so actually yeah if i do this and minus one here i know it should be plus one here no it should be plus one on the end of this one there we go now we're getting rid of the two. Oh my gosh plus one here get rid of this and get rid of my test here and now it should work please <laughs> yes thank you cool copy an object with object.assign so for this our case of online we want to change our status to be online when we call this action so to do this we'll return our object.assign and we'll make a new object which will be a combination of our state that we have plus an object that has status equaling online and i believe even though the state has offline here right now i think that when they become combined with by doing object.assign that the second status will override the first one and then it will turn to be online. So let's see if this works. Yep, cool. And there we go, we passed all the Redux challenges. Next up we have the React and Redux challenges. So this is how we are going to combine our React and Redux to make a really awesome program. And there's not very many challenges with React Redux, so it might be a shorter video. But yeah, hopefully you learned a lot about Redux in this video. Probably we'll need to supplement it with something else that we find online, like some other tutorial or by reading the documents. The docs are at Redux. Just look up Redux and it will show up as the docs and you hit get started. And here's the document. So just uh, read through it and you should learn a lot about Redux. That's gonna be it for me today and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.